So, uh, so you just have the partition not next to you. The, you were talking last time about uh, doing driving jobs. Yeah. So, can you remember where you got up to? Well, I just remember um, somebody who came to buy our news agent shop. What was a courier, a motorbike courier? Yeah. And uh, I was pretty bored in this cell, in this shop because we, it was just dead all the time. Mm. And um, he came up with this, put this little seed in my head, you know, saying, "Why don't you try it?" He was a motorbike courier, whereas I was just a van driver. Oh, well, just a van driver. I mean, I, I didn't have my motorbike license. Yeah. And um, I ran around a few couriers, light haulage companies. Managed to get in with one, and uh, after a disastrous start, things got a bit better. Did you tell us about the disastrous start? Yeah, the disastrous start was that I um, I rang up this particular firm early that day to mm. see if there was any chance of getting a putting a foot in putting my foot in the door with a view to any future vacancies. I didn't expect anything to come of it then and there that day. So. He called me back in the afternoon and said, "I've got a couple. I've got a job for you if you want it." And I said, "Well, yeah, okay, then. give it a crack." Came into Rotherham where he lived and uh, picked up a load of glassware for delivery down in Cardiff and Swansea, and Bristol, and Oxford. But I was new to it, and therefore. And I was also very tired because we were up all night waiting to get this stuff delivered anyway. And I only managed two out of four. Uh, so I, I had to drop off the... I managed to do the Cardiff and Swansea, but I didn't manage to do the Bristol and Oxford, so... Um, that had to be taken... I had to take that into Birmingham instead and drop it there yeah. for the next night. But that was enough for Steve to say he didn't want me anymore. Well, he didn't actually tell me he didn't want me anymore. He just never rang me yeah. or told me anything. Yeah. So I rang him back and uh, I just said to him, I don't have not heard from you or anything, you know, bloody there. And he said, well, he said, I just didn't think, you know, you, you, you missed two, you didn't complete that job I asked you to do. And, and, and uh, had sure. you, you, you been working with him some time, or was that your first go with him? First go, first go. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, I said to him, "Well, I said, you know, I, I get, I get it to a point, but I, I'm, I'm brand new at it. I told you that on the phone." And yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, "I'm new to it. I don't know my way around yet properly." Yeah. Um, and I was tired. Yeah. I was really tired. I set off in the morning. I got to got home to my mum and dad's at the time and kip. Well, did, you don't kip though when you've got an early start. You 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 cat nap, mm. and that's awful when you've got a long drive ahead of you because you get so tired. You know what I mean? You have an alarm clock. No alarm clock in my bedroom. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying is it's uh, you know it's a long way Sheffield to Cardiff to start with. But the alarm clock in your bedroom, did it wake you up all right? Yeah, it woke me up. But, and my dad, and my dad, bless him, he couldn't come with me, but he, he, he knocked me, you know, time to get up sort of thing. Yeah. Which was a killer, I found it really difficult. And, and I always found dr setting off early in the morning when I had an early job. You know, I had to be in London for seven in the morning or something yeah. like that. I never used to sleep very well the night before, ever. So what time would you have to set off then? Well, if it was a half seven drop, I'd have to be leaving. I, I'd be leaving about half past three or something like that. Yeah. So, was that... Had you already got the parcels with you in the van? Yes, I had at that stage, yeah. 
Yeah. It's just that I wasn't up to speed with getting cracked onto car, getting onto Swansea, going over to Bristol, going up to Oxford, you know what yeah. I mean? I, I wasn't experienced at the time at all. Well, well other, I suppose other drivers would have, uh, have the knack of it to a certain extent, wouldn't they? Have the knack? What I mean is they'd have the... They'd know the um, how to how to go quicker, or they'd know the routes better. They'd know so. the routes better, probably, yeah, more than anything. And it, it wasn't just that; it was the people that the, the, the company I, w I would I was delivering to w was Alders department yeah. store, a big Southern-based department store because yeah. uh, uh, all those four drops, Cardiff, Swansea. Bristol and Oxford, they were all for Alders. Yeah, yeah. And it was okay. Once you find Alders, you, you're you okay, you know what I mean? And you can get it delivered. But uh, sometimes some of these loading bays, you see the front of the shop that you want, but you can't find the, the loading bay. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, he didn't want to use me after that. And I said, well, you know, I don't have my first time. I mean, I'd, yeah, yeah. You know, give me a chance at least. Did you, I mean, did you know him very much before that? Yeah, I met him. You'd never met him before, but somebody put you on to him. So. No, I read him in. I read it in the yellow pages. I see. Yeah. 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 I usually, he, you know. So he worked. He his company DDS worked in conjunction with another courier firm yeah. called PDS Night Shift Express, and I did a bit of work. I did work for Steve, and I did a bit of work for. Yeah. For Night Shift Express later on. But um, it's a very, it's a very, um, what's the word? It's not, an, it's not a, it's not a particularly satisfactory way of working because you I was working on a self-employed basis, whether I was driving Steve's van or my van. Yeah. So it's yeah, so, you know. Anyway. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You take all the. Uh, yeah. It's not an enjoy. It's not an, it, to, to start with, and after I got over the first couple, those two, I quite, in a way, I quite enjoyed it. But gradually, it just took a hold, and I'm thinking, you know, I used to end up thinking, what the hell are you doing? You'll be stuck in a traffic jam, for example. Yeah. In the middle of bloody nowhere, still got the delivery to make, and then get home. Things like that. Yeah. And, and uh, it became a lonely job. I, I really started to, not only did I start to dislike it, I really quite resented it. Did you ever play music in your car? Oh yeah, I put music on, but what, what, in actual fact, I, I don't do it as a matter of course, because it, in an odd way, I find music distracting. I, I like it to be quiet Yeah. when I'm driving. Yeah. I love my music, as you know, but I mean, I... I when I'm driving, I, I I would have the radio on, and then it would be distracting me, so I turn it off. Would you? Sometimes Especially when I hit a town centre. When I came, when I came to the point where I was coming off the motorway, whatever, go to a town. Yeah. I, I always turn the music off. Always. What about when you when you'd finish your mission, as it were, and you just had to head back to Sheffield? Oh, well, that's more relaxing. Maybe, yeah, you maybe put the music on then. Yeah, a bit more relaxing. But then again, you knew you're going to have to probably get up at the same time tomorrow morning. Yeah. And uh, I mean, for, for that for that contract that he had, um, I did I did probably every major city in England. Near enough, anyway. Mm. And certainly over the time I was doing the job generally, I must have, I must have driven thousands of miles, you know what I mean? So, anyway, it's not very exciting, is it? <laughs> I suppose after spending some time, such a long time in hairdressing, I just fancied a bit of a change. Mm. And, um, 